what we're going to consider is the stability of carbanions. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, they're going to, we're going to consider a few things. Is it a primary carbon, secondary, tertiary? Is it resonance stabilized? Does it have an inductive effect? Is it even a carbon? So we're just going to look at this first example and start off by labeling each carbon that has the carbanion as primary, secondary, or tertiary, and checking whether it's benzylic, allylic, aka resonance stabilized. So let's look at this first one. This one is a tertiary carbon. So we're going to write, write tertiary. This one is a primary carbon. This one's a secondary. This one's a secondary benzylic. So it's a ben, it's, we're just going to write this one, benz for short. And we're going to write this one as a secondary, but look, it has a double bond right here that could probably resonate with it. So we're going to call this secondary allylic. So just ally for short. Now, which one's more stable than the other? Well, a carboanion, what it really is, is just extra negative charge. You want to get rid of that negative charge. So either you get rid of it through resonance or you get rid of it with electron withdrawing groups. So are carbons electron withdrawing groups? Actually, it's the opposite. Carbons are electron donating groups. So if it's a tertiary carbon surrounded by carbons, that means there's electron donating going towards it. So in this first example, we have three carbons that are basically donating their electron density to this carbon. That's exactly what you don't want to do. So a tertiary is going to be worse than a secondary, which is going to be worse than a primary. But if it's resonance stabilized, it's going to help distribute that charge, so it's going to make it pretty stable. So benzylic has multiple resonance stabilizations, multiple resonance forms, so we're going to rank this at number one. Number two will be this allylic because it has resonance stabilization, like I said. Now, primary, secondary, tertiary, which one is better than the other? Well, primary, it's out in the open. There's not much electron density around it, so it's better. Then the secondary, who has carbon groups, that's donating electron density, who's better than a, prime, than a tertiary, who has a bunch of carbon groups donating their electron density. So that's how you rank carboanions. Now, what about this example right here, where we have not only carbons with negative charges, but oxygens and nitrogens? Well, let's consider the first the, cur the carbons. Let's look at the carbons first. This one is a primary carbon. This one has three methyl groups on it, so it's a tertiary carbon. And this one has two carbons next to it, so it's secondary. Now, who can handle negative charges better, carbon or nitrogen? Well, nitrogen is more electronegative, so it can handle negative charges better. Then who is more electronegative than nitrogen? Well, oxygen is, because it can handle negative charges better. If you're electronegative, you like negative charges. Or not even then, but just you can handle it better. You're more happy with it. So we're going to rank oxygen better than nitrogen. And then we have this primary carbon. Well, this is going to be better than our secondary, which is going to be better than our tertiary. Now, what about this last example right here? Well, we have this benzene ring next to the cycloalkane, and we have a fluorine here. So we're going to follow the same rules where we want resonance stabilization, and we want inductive effects to pull away this negative charge. And we don't want tertiary carbons because that makes it that makes a lot of electron density around the carbon anion. So we're going to label each carbon. So on this one right here, we have a secondary, and then look, it's right next to the benzene ring, like directly attached to it. So we're going to call this a secondary benzylic, so secondary bens. Then this one just looks like a tertiary. There's no resonance around it, so we're just going to write tertiary. Here is a primary, and then over here we just have a secondary, right? And there is a fluorine next to us. That's good. And then we have also another secondary carbon where we have one, two carbons, but it's also benzylic because this carbon right here is right next to the benzene ring. So this is secondary benzylic. Now, we're going to look at our benzylic ones as the best ones. So this and this right here are the best ones. Now, which one is better, the one on this side or the one on that side? Well, the one directly attached to the fluorine is more stable because fluorine is an electron withdrawing group. It has a high electronegativity. So it's going to pull away this electron density as well as this benzene ring is going to stabilize the negative charge. So this is going to be number one versus this being number two. Then, obviously, a primary is more stable than a secondary, which is more stable than a tertiary. So we're going to put this at three, 
We're going to put this at 4. We're going to put this at 5. Now, we do have to mention that this fluorine is closer to the secondary carbon versus this primary carbon. But we also have to remember the fact that inductive effect has an effect, but it's not the greatest effect possible. So we're going to look at primary, secondary, and tertiary as a higher ranking or a high, more priority towards that than an inductive effect. So don't, don't get too confused about, well, this fluorine is closer to the secondary versus this primary. Being primary is more important. That's all I'm going to say from there. So those are just three different examples of how to rank carboanion stability. Just remember that carboanions are electron rich and they want to withdraw that electron density away and they don't want that negative charge. So that's all there is to it.